And uh, one of the things the Tanzania ministry team has done is wanted to have a compassion Sunday. And we have some experts on compassion here with Dan and Nova. We have several people in the congregation that have sponsored uh, compassion kids in the in Tanzania, specifically Same Cathedral Parish. And Pastor, if you're at the 8 o'clock service, gave a, a great explanation of um, how this is a great opportunity not only to help kids who are poor and in need of support, but also in the Same Parish. Right now, Gilead, who is my pen pal, is also in charge of the, the uh, Cathedral Parish uh, Compassion Program. They're still needing about 20 plus sponsors uh, for kids that don't have sponsors. But you also can, uh, as you will hear, sponsor a child anywhere in the world. So with that, I'll turn it over to the experts. Well, I'm not sure we're experts, but we're passionate about uh, Compassion International. Uh, welcome and happy Mother's Day to the moms here today. Delighted to uh, be able to do this on Mother's Day. We worried about attendance. Maybe some people said they were going to be out of town uh, to be with moms or with uh, children on Mother's Day, but we're glad you're here. Uh, Nova and I got interested in Compassion International quite a few years ago. We went to a Christian concert uh, in, I think it was Waterloo, wasn't it, at the Cattle Congress, maybe? It was a Christian concert and they had packets afterwards and we just, uh, they talked about it and we said, this is something that we could do. Uh, we could uh, help a child in another part of the world and who knows where that might lead. And uh, who knows where that has led. Uh, we have been now sponsors for three children and uh, one is complete, two are still in progress. One of those is almost complete. In fact, he is uh, pictured on this screen. Uh, uh, he's the, you know, a little distant there, but uh, he's the young man in the white shirt standing next to me. And Pastor Roger and Kathy are on there too. And and uh, I think, aren't they on that yeah. picture? Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, this young man has gone from five, we've sponsored him since he was five years old and he's now, uh, I think 21 soon we'll be through with the program at age 22, and it's been a delightful uh, experience. Let's go on to the next slide. There's Doug over there. Um, <laughs> Compassion International had its beginnings way back in 1952 uh, during the Korean War. Uh, Pastor Everett Swanson had gone to South Korea to minister to American troops there, and uh, he felt compelled to help those orphans that he saw. There were so many orphans in Korea and he just felt a real uh, need in his heart to, to help them. And so he came back and, and that was the beginning of Compassion International, to help children develop their full potential as God intends them to be. Uh, the mission statement for Compassion International is releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. Uh, and from their website, they are advocates for children committed to Jesus Christ in all that we do, Christ-centered, church-driven, child-focused, the world's leading authority in holistic child development through sponsorship. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute. Next slide. Uh, Compassion uh, does its work uh, throughout the world. Uh, thousands of local churches in now 25 countries in the world. One of those countries happens to be Tanzania, and one of those sites happens to be the Cathedral Parish, uh, where we have a partnership. This is the Cathedral Parish uh, building, and if you uh, look closely, I think uh, Pastor Roger is there on the, on the uh, patio, having preached at 6.30 in the morning that weekend when we were there. Only one service, and it's at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> he, he, he left that service and said, I think we need to do this at Gloria Day. It gives me the whole day to play golf. And and I said, I don't think so. Next slide. It may be the heat. <laughs> I think it is partly. Thank you. Um, 
Compassion talks about holistic care for the children. Uh, and holistic care is uh, whole life care. That doesn't mean necessarily care for an entire life, but it's comprehensive care to help these children to, to develop and become responsible and fulfilled adults. So they come on weekends uh, to the program. They are taught spiritually. They are taught life skills. We'll talk about that some more. And the families are given uh, help and nutrition, uh, help with family planning and all those kinds of things. And it begins with prenatal care often and goes all the way through, as I said, age 22. Uh, they help babies and mothers in poverty. They develop future leaders and they meet critical needs. Next slide. So um, their goal is to work with the neediest and most vulnerable children in the community, the poorest of the poor. And they can be not just members of that parish, but they can be Muslim. Uh, the, the, there are Muslims, in, I think something like 30 or 40 percent of the community is Muslim. I'm not positive about that. Uh, and then there's there are Catholics, there are Lutherans in that community, there are evangelicals, uh, some of the other uh, denominations are represented there. But most of these folks come out of homes that probably have no active affiliation in any of those uh, religions or denominations. And so they offer uh, medical checkups and health care to these young mothers, uh, protection from crime, violence, and danger, which are present there as they are here, and access to special services like surgeries, disaster relief. Uh, they had a windstorm go through there a few years ago, like our derecho, blew the roof off of one of their uh, partner churches there. Uh, so there are uh, similar disasters, flooding, uh, drought, uh, both have happened in the last uh, 10 or 20 years. Next slide. So, um, Nova, do you want to say something about education at all? Uh, and uh, it's up to you. There's a mic here. Uh, but <clears throat> they offer ongoing training uh, through the in this case, the Cathedral Parish. These are pictures, by the way, that I have taken over the years. I've been there, uh, personally, I've been there three times. And uh, on one occasion, we were there when Compassion was in session. That was back in 2006. Nova wasn't with me on that trip. What we saw is that on Saturdays Close. is when the children would come to the Cathedral Church, and then they would be given opportunities for Christian learning, for um, activities, physical things, while the parents then would be uh, getting some nutritional education, uh, just meeting with uh, other leaders of the uh, compassion uh, community there, helping those children and parents. That's what I saw. We also saw in the buildings where they had, uh, we saw Juma once where there were some computers where they would come and be able to have that opportunity to use computers. But this is not a school. They don't go to school there. They, are, they still go to their community school. But Saturday is when they are offered this extra. Then we saw a lot of the children sing on Sunday, didn't we, their little choir, those who wanted to participate. And then I think during the week, that's when the compassion people are going out into the homes, meeting with the families, meeting with the babies, uh, helping them with uh, any kind of care and raising their young children. Yeah, so that's what they I help saw. With their school studies too. And they help with their school studies. That's why I think they had the computers in that one building that they could come later and be able to have access to that. And that's that's what we saw, you know, in Same and other compassions. I think I've seen where they had sewing machines. They were, you know, teaching the, the young mothers how to sew. With they do here too. Next slide. <laughs> There's a sewing machine. So they do teach them uh, key life skills. Uh, this happened to be a, a, a sewing class. Uh, we also saw work out in the outdoor kitchen. Uh, they were trained to cook meals and prepare meals when they got old enough, of course. 
uh, because they start at age five, and that's probably a little early. Uh, but uh, very impressed with those programs. Uh, vocational programs, uh, the, the sponsorship money that we provide to the children actually uh, helps pay for education beyond uh, so that they will uh, attend uh, uh, vocational training programs, sometimes even pre-college. Uh, uh, Juma, the young man that you saw on that first slide, actually has gone to uh, learn electrical skills uh, so that he can be an electrician. He's learned other skills as well because the last notice, the last uh, family letter we got from him, and you get letters on a fairly regular basis, he said, uh, pray for me because he said, I've started a chicken raising business. So, uh, he and he sent some pictures of his chickens. <laughs> Next slide. Kathy, I want uh, you to say a little bit about this. this uh, health and hygiene training, and the next slide will be on nutrition. So uh, you were involved with us when we went, uh, and, and Pastor Roger too, if you wish to. No, I, I defer to her. That's what I try to do. She, I wanted her to do the whole thing, but. <laughs> we went on this home visit, and it was really quite enlightening, because um, they did, they brought toys for the little ones. They brought um, some educational materials on birth control. Um, yeah, and these homes are just nothing. Um, I think one of the things that I was impressed with was the amount of care that they gave for the whole family. It wasn't just the little ones that I really appreciated. One of the other educational things that I thought was so cool is, I mean, the dirt over there, I don't know how anything grows. It's just clay and whatever. But anyway, at one of the, uh, when we were back at the Somme Church, right outside one of the classrooms, they had hundreds of starts of trees and shrubs that they were teaching the kids how to plant those and then take them back into their own homes that yards that, to help with erosion um, when the floods come or give them shade. And they just, yeah, they're just all over the place with taking care of the whole body's needs, the whole family needs. Let's move to the next slide. This was um, a nutritional set session that they were uh, doing for young, well, it wasn't just moms. There were a couple of dads that were there. And what they were scooping out there is some kind of high protein supplement and distributing that and telling them, you know, teaching them how to take care of the kids, how to feed them, work on cleanliness so that they can stay more healthy. Next slide. Uh, they offer recreational activities, uh, which helps build self-confidence and social skills. This is uh, our son, Aaron, who was with me in 2006. Uh, he was uh, meeting some kids as they got ready for a soccer game. They were going to have a, uh, a soccer game uh, as part of their recreation that day. Uh, there were probably, I don't know, over 100 kids around that day, and uh, some of them were in actively involved in soccer, others were involved in other activities. Compassion says, we believe the most effective way to release children from poverty is through a one-to-one -one relationship between the sponsor and a child. We commit to connect each child in our program to only one sponsor at a time to help sponsors cultivate meaningful relationships with the children they sponsor and to help sponsors understand the effects poverty has on children and their development. Excellent goals, I think. This is uh, the family, our most recent family. Magdalena is the little girl in the picture. Uh, I imagine her little brother, if that is her brother, we weren't absolutely positive <laughs> if it was, but he was there. Uh, in fact, he took a liking to Roger, isn't he? The guy that you, you grabbed and held, I think I have a picture of you. With, with that little guy. I, I, I remember him. I don't remember that specifically, but. Yeah, and, and uh, but you can see uh, the home that they live in is uh, very sparse. Uh, we were inside of those homes. They took us into 
uh, meet the families usually uh, in both he and Juma's uh, mom's home, uh, uh, both uh, she and, and Juma's uh, mom's homes are very sparse. Uh, uh, sometimes one or two rooms, uh, the door is a curtain that uh, comes down. They are definitely people in poverty, but uh, wonderful people. We brought uh, some games, uh, some toys to give to Magdalena, and she was excited and most grateful for those. Um, as I said before, we've been able to develop these relationships, and the one with Juma has just been delightful. I've seen him now twice on two different trips. Uh, two different trips that were about four years apart. And uh, to see him grow and to see him, he remembered us and, and just hugged us and wanted to spend the entire day with us the second or the, the second time we saw him. Just a delightful thing. And we we do correspond with him on a regular basis and, and with Magdalena too, but you know, she's smaller yet. And so not so much with her. Nobody want to add anything to that? So what does it mean to be a sponsor? Um, for uh, just $38 a month, uh, you receive this very unique relationship with your child. And, and speaking from uh, our situation personally, uh, especially since we've had the opportunity to meet both of them, what a fantastic experience to to have this relationship, to know that we have children in another part of the world that uh, mean a lot to us and we mean a lot to them is, is fantastic. We get personal letters on a regular basis. Uh, I would say maybe once a quarter, um, four times a year. And, and we respond, send letters back. Uh, we get up-to-date photos as the children uh, grow upstairs. I think Nova has on the poster board couple of different pictures of uh, one of our children. Uh, you get information about special opportunities, perhaps a birthday or Christmas. Uh, usually they expect you can, you don't have to give anything for birthday or Christmas, but if you'd like, they suggest maybe $25 each time. So an extra $50 a year besides the $38 a month is what we we count on. And when we've been over there, when we've had the opportunity to take that trip, we've taken some small gifts along for, for our children. And, and most importantly, uh, the knowledge that you're making an in eternal difference in the child's life. And uh, they will share that with you. They'll share their faith with you as they, because they are growing in faith as they go along. Um, they're not necessarily Christian. I asked, uh, Gilliard, if, if this was an evangelistic opportunity, you know, do they expect children to join the church? He said, no, not at all. He said, uh, uh, all we do is love them. And then most of them do come and join our church afterwards just because we love them. And I think that's a wonderful uh, a way to do evangelism is just to love. And then people understand what the love of Jesus is all about. Okay, now we're gonna see a video. Uh, this video uh, is just brief, but it sort of talks about a, a young girl through her whole experience in compassion, not in Tanzania, but uh, through her experience uh, in another country, growing up from a small child to where she is today. And you'll be impressed. I can remember you need a mute. Thank you. I've made that mistake many times. The day my mother found out she was pregnant, my father told her to end the pregnancy. 
or he would leave her. She chose me. He was gone before I took my first breath. As a single, uneducated mother in Villa Flores, Mama struggled every day to provide for us. As a young girl, I would think about my future. Would I ever become someone? The voices of my neighborhood said, you're just a poor child. Your future is set. You will never become anything. Needed someone to change my future. I joined the compassion program at my church. One day, I shared my dream with my sponsor. My sponsor's reply was simple. Yanelli, I love you, and I believe in you. Sometimes you can't believe in a dream until someone else believes it with you. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. My name is Yanelli Suero, doctor, wife, mother, and a precious daughter of God. Right now, there are millions of children all over the world who are desperate for someone to believe in their future, just like I was. On this Compassion Sunday, you can tell a child in poverty you believe in their future. Sponsor a child today. I don't think he was a part of the Compassion Program there. Uh, he came to the U.S. Uh, through a special sponsorship program uh, for high school uh, exchange students. And uh, he, his family doesn't have a lot of money, but he was allowed to do that. And uh, he came here, uh, and because he was from Same, uh, we got a call, uh, the International Exchange Program found out that our church in Cedar Rapids had an uh, exchange program uh, with the, our partner program with, at that time, the Cathedral Parish. I've explained that relationship to you before. Uh, and uh, said, would you be willing to find a sponsor home for him uh, while he goes to school in Cedar Rapids? And, and they wanted him in Iowa somewhere. And we found a family from our congregation. Uh, that young man went back and is now a doctor today. Uh, he has gone through medical school. We found uh, some doctors in Cedar Rapids who are willing to sponsor him to do that. Uh, they are uh, very industrious uh, folks and they want to achieve. Uh, and uh, today he, uh, in fact, he is going to um, uh, Latvia to do some advanced study. He needs support for that. Nova and I are going to send some. If any of you have a heart for that, you can you can join us in that. But he needs some support to get there, to fly to Latvia. Uh, he's been offered a scholarship to do a a program there. But it's it's so great to see these kids develop into something when they come from homes of poverty. And uh, I, I want you to know that. 
if you sponsor a child, and I think we have a unique opportunity here at Gloria Day to uh, sponsor a child in a, in a parish that we have a relationship with. And if some of you someday take a trip to Tanzania and be able to meet your ch children there, that would be true in other parts of the world too, of course, if you sponsor a child from Guatemala, say, and you have a chance to go to Guatemala in the future, uh, you, you could see your children there. They, they encourage that, they don't discourage it at all. Uh, I wanna offer uh, an opportunity for questions if you have any. I can't believe there wouldn't be any questions. Yes. Uh, Oops, here we go. Um, Dan, my question was one of the slides that you said uh, when we give money would help protect uh, the children from evil, or I don't remember how. Uh -oh. Uh, from violence and disaster, yes, yes. I think. Now, uh, so how does that happen? Well, you know, they they have a relationship, and so the kids are there. I think more than anything, they don't have the opportunity to get involved in gangs and things like that that we they have there as well as here. You know, because they're at a weekend program and they're taught uh, a whole different way of life than a child in poverty might experience otherwise. Um, that's the best answer I think I can give you. So, thirty-eight dollars a month. So, for example, what what exactly do they do they receive? Look like sort of an education, or what what do the what does this child receive out of the thirty-eight a month? Um, Nova did some follow through, uh, asked uh, Gilliard for some records uh, about the children. And you want to speak first to that? You know, you always question that. Okay, does my $38 really go to them? <clears throat> so I asked, I asked to see records on our child. And he pulled out a notebook and it shows when he went to the doctor, what kind of immunizations they've been receiving, if they had to have special medical care, if they were in need of a uniform. Um, so I feel $38 is, you know, I can't believe it could go that far, okay. but in that country, it's true. So I was very impressed to see detailed information about our child because we got to meet with the director. And I was just, to me, I said, this is a true program because I know how you always worry, this is $38, where does it go? How much for administration? But I think it really goes far there. And it's my understanding too that some of it is saved, uh, which uh, pays for their vocational school. Like uh, Juma is going to uh, electric electrician school, and it helps to pay for that as well. So, not that they keep a fund so that these kids can get an education later on uh, beyond beyond high school. I have a hundred questions, but I'll only ask a couple. Uh, in the slides. It showed the kids in school. They were all in uniform. Are all of those kids in the program, or how do they differentiate when when one kid is in the program and one kid is not? Like for example, that classroom, like it looked like it was maybe forty kids. How many of those would be in the program? All of them. All of them. All of them are in the program. They have uh, a couple hundred in the compassion program. Yeah, I think between a hundred and two hundred kids. It, it, at that particular site. And so this program, Compassion, it, are the people on site who run the program? Yes. The Compassion people? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the Compassion, Compassion facilitates the relationship and there's, sorry. You, you need this back in camp. <laughs> Gilliard is a staff member of the Cathedral Parish and he's the director of the Compassion program. He's got guidelines he has to live up to yes. for sake of compassion, uh, right? And that's he's correct. Not, he's not employed by compassion, I don't believe. It was my understanding that compassion came to that parish and said we would like to uh, have a project site in Sabe. 
and the cathedral parish said, yes, we'll do that. And Gilliard was appointed uh, the director of the program. He may be paid a little by, by compassion, by compassion, I think. Is he a local person? Yes, yes, yes he's local and a member, a member of that congregation. Right. Yeah, we've been to his house. <laughs> These kids that we saw in the, in the slide were quite young. Does the program go all the way through like high school? Yes, it goes to age 22. Uh, when they turn 22, the sponsorship ends. So it can start as young as a, a, a you know, a preemie. There's a, there's one of the packets upstairs from Tanzania is of a one-year-old, I think, isn't it, Nova? Oh, I, one or two year old, and and you continue to sponsor then until age 22, and then it ends automatically. It's also a 19 year old up there on the table. Is there so that one would be just for two years, uh, three years? So in the village, I don't know how many children there are in the village. If that slide showed all of the kids that were in the school, or if there are some who are not in that program. Uh, it showed up. It showed some of the kids in the compassion program. Like I said, when we were there uh, in 2006, there must have been 150 kids uh, at the program on a Saturday afternoon. They just go on on Saturdays, and then they're invited to be there for worship on Sunday. Often they they sing at the service on Sunday. And what happens to the kids that are not in the program? In the community. Same thing as here. I mean, uh, there, the, the community is maybe 30,000 or so oh, really? residents. That large. Yeah. And so, uh, right, there, there are a lot of kids in the community that are not a part of the program, but uh, they can apply to be a part. They have to agree uh, to some uh, rules if they're a part of the program, and that is to make sure their kids get there and, and uh, Participate in the nutritional and the and the uh, uh, hygiene and and life skills programs that the mothers have to be a part of if they want to be a part of the program. And it's I interesting like that. because when we were there, the family, the little gal that you saw with her child uh, on the floor, Kathy talked about uh, uh, providing some um, <laughs> training, including. Uh, 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 birth control training, yeah. And uh, that family, a few hours later, was at the nutrition class at, at the church in the afternoon. And it's probably a mile and a half or two miles across town. And they had walked uh, to be there uh, for the nutrition program that afternoon. I want to put in my two cents for it. I thought, well, if we have a companion congregation, I need to know more about Tanzania. So I asked him for a, a pen pal, and he hooked me up with a lady called Rosemary, who's in charge of, or I, I think her responsibilities are for women and children. Um, and she sent me a video just recently. I unfortunately didn't have the opportunity or took the opportunity to put it on the screen, but she was working with a, a group of, looked like a, at least 60 kids, and they looked like they were all eight or nine years old. She was teaching them in the morning um, sewing things, needlework, and then how to make juice uh, with the fruit off the trees. And then this wonderful song, and I love the singing that they do. They just look so joyous and happy. So if you want to see that video, come to see. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I, I will say that, uh, you know, when we were there in 2006, uh, they had uh, most of the classes were held outside under trees uh, because they just didn't have the facilities uh, to have them inside. They did take them into the church if they had to, but uh, they were meeting outside. And and uh, we were so impressed with that uh, that just a few years, two years ago, after our son Aaron died, um, we decided to. Uh, help them with a classroom. They were building a classroom uh, to house some of the compassion programs, and they use it for their church uh, Sunday school program as well. But uh, when 
I contacted them. They, what they do over there is they build what they can afford. And so they had the foundation built, really nothing else. And when we were there, and uh, this was before Aaron died actually in 2015, and uh, <clears throat> they, they had the foundation built. And I said, no, but I talked about it after Aaron died. And, and uh, we said, how about the possibility of us helping to pay for the rest of that? And they and they and Gilliard uh, and others wrote back and said, "No, oh, you know what? Uh, we're raising the money for that classroom. We really need another one." Uh, and it's amazing how you know we offered a certain amount of money, and that can go a long way. It built another classroom, so now they have two classrooms uh, uh, there, uh, maybe three, uh, some and bathrooms too, and bathrooms. Right? We were. Glory Day was involved in those bathrooms, right? So, yeah. Just to Kai's uh, question, I think, you know, the class they were in was the compassion class, which is on a Saturday. Those students also go to community school Monday through Friday. Yes, thank you, Steve, for so, clarifying that. And, and then what compassion does is help them able to make the most out of those studies in public school by tutoring or facilitating the, the rest of their education. But what's happening in that class that you showed is all related to Christian education and the compassion program. Right. Christian education, life skills, uh, which they might not get in in their regular public education. Thank you. That's, that's important. Should have clarified that. I wondered about food, we talked about nutrition. How much is day-to-day -day hunger? What about groceries? Uh, how does that figure into the program? I'm not sure I can answer how much compassion, you know, pays for uh, the daily nutrition, but uh, the church I know helps uh, people with in times of poverty. When we were there in 2006, they had um, piles, I mean, like you see here at an elevator sometimes, piles of corn, ears of corn uh, near the church. Uh, and people were coming to pick up those ears of corn. Now they're not sweet corn like we have in Iowa. When when the folks were here, uh, I made sure they had an opportunity to taste sweet corn. They weren't sure about the sweet corn because it was so much different from eating field corn, uh, which they were experiencing over there. Uh, but, uh, you know, sweet corn, we think, is something fantastic here in Iowa. At least I do. I do, too. Um, so at the prayers, every month on the second Wednesday, Sunday, we, uh, we take the prayers that Philly are sent, and those are on the, the prayer concerns that you get online. Uh, two of the prayers they mentioned is that it's, uh, they have a, a more than the normal number of people very vulnerable right now. Number one, because of drought. And some farmers are actually anticipating no crop. Uh, and, uh, and number two, how does this sound? Inflation. Uh, directly, he mentioned because of the, of the Ukraine war and I mean, inflation and, and coming out of COVID, inflation is very high. And so people who are marginal uh, in terms of how well they are, um, yeah, they're vulnerable. Just as the vulnerable ones in Iowa City are more affected by circumstances like that. You know, it's amazing to see uh, what that congregation has done. I've gotten photos over the years from people that I know there, uh, when they are in a situation of poverty or uh, their crops are overrun by elephants, <laughs> which wasn't something they even worried about in 2006, but the elephants are looking for food too. And so they come down into the community and to uh, they run over the, and eat the corn in the fields that the uh, folks have planted. So, uh, you know, they, the church takes a real responsibility and sees uh, as an important part of their mission to provide food uh, for uh, people in that community, not just members, but for everybody in the community.
Another question. Okay. <laughs> a compassion organization. Is there somebody local on, on the field from this country, or how is it run technically? Uh, <clears throat> compassion International has its headquarters in uh, Colorado Springs. And uh, I was mentioning, I think, to Ken here earlier that uh, we. Uh, I got to know uh, a guy by the name of Jim Miato, who was from Chicago, and uh, oh. he was involved in another organization before, and, and he was asked to uh, join Compassion as their CEO, and he's been there now for, I don't know, 10 years at least, and is doing, I think, a great job. So their organization has their headquarters here. Uh, to my knowledge, no, there's no one on site in, in Sami from here. They depend on Gilead to, to manage the program. I'm sure they have site visits occasionally from people in the Compassion program, but they trust the local people to run the programs and they're expected to do it according to certain rules. Uh, you know, they have to agree to certain expectations from Compassion International and run it uh, in, in the ways that they expect uh, Compassion will be run. But I no, I've never seen anybody on site there uh, uh, from America. Where is Compassion International um, organization based? I mean, where are they, where is the main headquarters? Uh, it's in, in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, they uh, and, and I've not visited their headquarters there, but um, I, their offices are in Colorado Springs. That's where we've corresponded to prepare for Passion Sunday. And they've been, they're wonderfully organized and we've had no problems connecting. Uh, they encouraged other congregations to have Compassion Sunday uh, on, uh, May 1st last week uh, rather than Mother's Day, but they were perfectly agreeable to have us do it on Mother's Day. It was the day that was open in Chris's calendar for adult form, and we had a, a wonderful program last week on mental health. I wouldn't have missed that. So I'm glad we got to see that last week and, and now uh, able to do it today. We'll have, I uh, want to get the next slide. Uh, oh, it's up there. Uh, so you know, just in, uh, to sponsor a child, we have that table upstairs if you haven't been there already. Uh, there are packets there with photos of the children from not only our partner congregation in Same, but also other locations around the world. Uh, as I said earlier at the beginning, they, they, they work in 25 countries of the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, there'll be, I don't know, there are probably eight or 10 other countries uh, offered up there if you want, if you have a connection to another country. If all of the uh, Sami kids get taken today, there, there were, I think, eight or nine packets from our partner congregation. They, they sent us packets based on the size congregation we are. So because we're, uh, you know, uh, the, the size we are not a really large congregation, not a really small one, but they sent us about uh, 20 packets, I think, expecting that's how many families will sponsor children. Uh, we're to return the unused packets, the ones that aren't taken, uh, but uh, there uh, are some from Sami. If, if you don't get one from Sami today and you want one from there, I've been told that uh, Gilliard says there are still they still have some unsponsored children, and uh, we might be able to have. I'll call Compassion tomorrow, and they could have those packets here by next Sunday, or or she said on the phone that we could we could provide packets for another two weeks. So you can see your children. You can sign up today. They prefer to have us return 
the packets and then they know that uh, they, they get taken care of and they don't get lost somewhere. But you are allowed to take them home and fill them out and send them in if you want to do that. Uh, it's a fairly easy process uh, to fill out a, a application form. So you, Nova knows a little bit more about that. And you can talk to her up at the table. Uh, but the, there are uh, uh, about eight or nine kids from Sami, and they're cute kids. Uh, and hopefully someday, if uh, you have a chance to travel over there, you ought to take one of those kids if you're gonna if you're thinking about sponsorship. But please, there the need is there around the world, so don't feel you have to take someone from Sami. Any other questions? We're Well, thanks for coming. It's something that we feel really passionate about and, and uh, because we've seen it firsthand. It's, it's a wonderful program and I, I, I ask that God will bless you. I, I am certain that will happen if you decide to sponsor a child. Thanks. Thank you.